Stand by to receive our transmission. Casting from the deep depths of cyberspace, this is Darn IT Podcast, Cybersecurity Made Simple, and I'm your host, Darn G, CEO of Darn IT Group. Welcome for this next episode of Darn IT Podcast. Before I get into this podcast, I first just want to convey my apologies when it comes to the last three weeks of the podcast with the COVID pandemic really had to do some changes uh, with the organization, a few office moves here and there, um, which utilize a lot of my time and energy. So I was not able to keep up with the weekly podcast. So I just wanted to convey that to my listeners across the world, because I know that uh, most of you get some good information from these podcasts and do look forward to them. It's just like on any streaming service when you're looking at getting the next episode and it takes forever to to get launched. So I can understand in more ways than that for the reason why some of you were messaging me asking me when I was going to post another episode. So without further ado, we got a ton of episodes lined up to listen to. So I hope you enjoy. Uh, Episode 27. Still using Windows 7. And why should you switch to Windows 10? Well, I first want to mention that most of you listening to this have either A, moved on from Windows 7, or B, are still on Windows 7. Now, what really inspired me to make this podcast was uh, someone I was talking to that made mention about not being able to afford an upgrade on their computer from Windows 7 to Windows 10. Now, those I can understand. So if if you're running a very small micro business or you're an individual, these things that I'm going to talk about should still be on top of your mind. But I want you to know that this message is directed towards businesses, computers that are constantly on all the time and relied on for any organization to turn a profit, to generate revenue, and to keep people employed. Uh, a, few of, a few of my experiences in dealing with this is um, some instances in uh, healthcare industries, I still see a, not a vast, but a decent majority of healthcare clinics, um, no matter what they are, who are still using Windows 7 machines, and albeit, unfortunately, Windows XP. Now, a lot of these uh, rebuttals that we receive here at Darn IT Group when it comes to upgrading from Windows 7 to Windows 10 is about incompatibilities with software or hardware, which again is understandable. So again, this podcast will go through some of the steps to apply to any software uh, for any size organization so that they can make the right mitigations to protect their company an organization from getting hit by the latest ransomware or malware that's out there on the web. Now, it's it's really coming down to your test in terms of resiliency in in this digital age and understand that it's not as a simple A plus B equals C sort of mindset when it comes to protecting your organization when you're using obsolete operating systems. And most of you understand the reasons why you need to upgrade your operating systems. Again, some people cite that that's the big old Microsoft trying to get an extra buck out of you, uh, which I never disagree with. But at the same time, you have to understand that Microsoft is also a business that needs to invest a lot of its money into keeping the latest and greatest technologies out there. And those cycles are meant to protect you as a consumer. And yes, to also line their pockets, but in a business sense, that makes complete sense. So understand that there are a lot of uh, people power, time, resources that go into these uh, patching updates, 
the developments of the operating system. So you are paying for something that benefits you and will help protect you in the present and also in the future. So it's really key to keep that in mind moving forward. Now, a bit of a history lesson. Understand that Windows 7 was launched in 2009 and it ended support on January 2020. Now, at the time at January 2020, when the support was ended, over 100 million users were still on the platform at the time. Again, as I said earlier, some people may still be on Windows 7. So what, what can you do? Well, as you may have noticed, that Windows 7 would not just stop working altogether. When a product, especially when it comes to Windows, um, the support is actually ceasing the security updates, the security patches. So those security patches help decrease the amount of vulnerabilities and chance that your computer would get infected or exploited from a vulnerability built into the operating system. Now, when it comes down to understanding the value of this, keep in mind that, again, these security researchers work around the clock to find any holes that are being exploited in the wild and attempt to close those doors, as you will, from threat actors getting into your computer or products, and most importantly, your data. But again, people still are using Windows 7 and Windows XP. So in the terms of the government standpoints, um, private agencies are all calling everybody, telling them to do a quick upgrade to end users and infrastructures. Now, they understand that this does take time and money, but fundamentally speaking, this is meant to keep an organization from getting attacked. The problem is that some businesses use older obsolete software, which will not run on newer, newer operating systems. Or like I said, they may have no budget for their, the software vendors, new fancy dancy cloud-based, or maybe the new licensing pricing that may have come out, which may not really be palatable for organizations because it does eat into their bottom line. So as the old terminology goes, if it ain't broke, don't fix it sort of mentality. And to an extent, I understand that. A lot of businesses can operate using the legacy systems, but at the same time, they may not realize that those legacy systems are not supported anymore. When a product is no longer supported by its developer, there are limits to the mitigations that will effectively mitigate those cyber threats. And over time, those new vulnerabilities will be exploded by even some of those low end cyber attackers. So over time, the um, lowest on the barrel cyber criminals, as you will, will look at ways to exploit those easy vulnerabilities. So for example, if you're a manufacturing organization and you have a legacy product, um, just think about all the other manufacturing companies who may have used that particular uh, software for a time. And as that software becomes obsolete, the vendor is no longer supporting it. So therefore, these lower end cyber criminals will look at ways to try to exploit that. So if they could distribute a payload that could take advantage of those vulnerabilities, they will. So here's some steps to apply to literally any software which is approaching its end of support period. So step one, the simple one, migrate away from obsolete software. All businesses should only use software products that are supported by the vendor due to those security vulnerabilities and once the software is no longer supported. And you think that would be common sense, but again, in the real world, there's a lot of businesses who do not migrate to the latest and greatest, again, citing those upgrade issues. Now, importantly, uh, upgrading your high risk end user devices and servers. This includes systems for remote access, devices that can access more sensitive information or services that should be prioritized for upgrades. So again, if if you cannot be, if you cannot migrate an upgrade before the end of the support period, 
there are some additional mitigations that you can undertake in order to protect yourself, which brings me, which brings me to step two of those mitigations, is to apply a short-term mitigation strategy. So unsupported software or products that remain unpatched will inevitably at some point get exploited by threat actors. So keep this in mind when you look at the mitigations, if you're running unsupported or legacy systems that there is a higher chance that this product or service can and will be exploded by cyber criminals. Reduce the likelihood of compromise by preventing the devices from accessing the untrusted contents. To reduce the impact of compromise by preventing the access to sensitive data or services from vulnerable devices. So keep that in mind when you're looking at the mitigation processes, if you still need to run that, those legacy, the legacy processes or software, I understand you wanna minimize, reduce, and or eliminate the impact or compromise with in regards to the accessibility to that data. Now onto step three, apply mitigations to resolve the likelihood of compromise. So exploits based on malicious data can only be successful if the data can be reached by the, the, the vulnerable product. Routes by which malicious data could reach obsolete software, which can include your email, um, web browser, file shares, and network ports, or removable media. So all the touch points that a computer may get access to in its endeavors could be those touch points that could be an increased likelihood of compromise. Uh, servers should not be used for the end user activities and data flows to unpatched servers should be carefully considered and reduced where possible. Um, data and files secured from the internet should be treated as untrusted, even though it's coming from a third party or known third party resource. Uh, prevent access to untrusted services. That includes preventing access to external email or preventing the device from accessing the internet altogether. What you're trying to do is to reduce the attack vector. Use the the issues, you're utilizing those issues um, will help remove the compromise from that particular legacy device. This will be an infect, uh, effective way um, to do this. But keep in mind, in order for that to be effective, you must use technical enforcement because you cannot sit there and rely on a human to, to do these things. Sometimes they may want to peruse the internet or open an email service and not think about the issues here. You must have the processes in place to lock it down. So also, you got to prevent those access to removable media, which includes mobile or cellular in, um, hardware and also tablet systems. These are all key here. So really the the, the core message to any of this is, is avoid coming to contact with malware and make sure that you have nothing to lose. So think of it as the technical COVID separation, the two meters apart sort of analogy uh, when it comes to running legacy software. So keeping, keeping aware that if that particular system processes what have you is accessing the internet in some way, understand you're increasing your attack vector or threat threat vector when it comes to operating your, your machines or your legacy machines online. So a general rule of thumb here is running good malware, protective software, firewalls really help minimize the risk. But really there is, and I've seen zero security platforms that is foolproof. There's always something that will circumvent it or something either uh, technologically speaking or human that will circumvent the software or these protective services to allow that computer to become compromised and infected. 
And, and last step here is to just upgrade your operating system or purchase a new computer which has the latest operating system built in. Or really the last resort you have is to sit there and pray that you don't get hit with some, some nasty ransom or you don't lose your customer's information. So that's a really key thing when it comes to those takeaways here from this podcast is understanding that, yes, you may have certain stuff and processes in place, but you have to understand that you need to be prepared to lose everything in the event that your legacy device gets compromised. And if that's something that you cannot handle or the organization cannot handle, then you must sincerely look at your strategies and look at ways to protect yourself, your organization and your infrastructure from outsider or insider attack when it comes to utilizing those legacy services. And again, upgrade the upgrade the damn thing and make sure you have the latest and greatest because you do not need to take that risk while operating your business online. Thank you for listening to this episode of Darn IT Podcast with Darnley G. If you like our show and want to know more, like or subscribe our podcast. Now remember, look both ways before crossing the information superhighway. Safe computer, everybody. Bye.